This is a work and rate question from the GMAT prep tests. We see this one a lot in uh, GMAT tutoring because it is on the more difficult side of things. That said, it's actually a pretty basic setup. What's challenging here is the execution. So I'd start by defining the question, and that's usually this last sentence, and we're looking at this. We want to know how many hours it took the boat to travel downstream. So let's go ahead and define that. It's a distance of 90 miles. And we know that it went uh, downstream at an average speed of V plus 3. So I'm going to put that here, and then we can go ahead and calculate the time. And in case you're not familiar with these t's, it's just taking the DRT formula and putting it in a little chart. So distance on top, right there on the bottom left, and time on the bottom right. The bottom multiplied, the product of the bottom equals the top. And then if you divide t by r, you get t, and t by t, you get r. So it's a nice way to organize work and rate questions. All right, so the next piece of information is upstream. And it's the same distance, but the speed's different. Now we're just looking for a way to get these pieces of information uh, talking to each other. And we can just use the last piece of um, information from the question that upstream took a half hour longer. And then this side gets the plus half an hour. So now we just need to simplify this. And just take your time. Don't worry about finding inferences. Let them come from just taking one common sense step after another. I'd probably go ahead and um, get rid of these denominators first. You can do that however you like. I'm just going to multiply all these denominators through. Maybe I'll do this in two steps. So we'll get rid of those guys first. And then you end up with both of them here because you don't get any cancellation. And then I'd probably just multiply by 2. Get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and do the difference of squares here just to save a little bit of time because I'm recognizing that that's what that is. And if you have to do out any of this math, for instance, if 180 times 3 doesn't come um, intuitively, just do it out. Take your time. Anything that I'm doing arithmetic-wise in my head, uh, you don't have to do it in your head. There's no pressure to do that. The important thing is just to stay organized with everything that you do. Avoid making assumptions. Then we could do some cancellation. That's gone. And then I'm going to group like terms. I'm going to add the 540. And we can also add the 9. And it's really likely that 1089 is a perfect square. And so you just need to come up with a system for figuring out what that number is. And I would just uh, just estimate. So you know that like 30 squared is 900. And you know that uh, 40 squared is 1600. Right? Those are pretty easy. So you know that 1089 has got to be between these two guys and much closer to this. Now let's think about units digits. We know that we need to end in 9. And so I would say, hmm, well, i got to be close to 30. Got to end in 9. So not unlikely that we're talking 33, because when you square 33, you definitely end up uh, with a 9 at the, in the units digit. And so I would just try that out. It pretty much has to be that, but I would just 
quickly take a look. I'm just doing distribution math here, which I use for just about all of my multiplication. Yeah, we're looking good because the sum of these guys is definitely 1089. All right, so now we know that V is equal to 33. And we need to solve for the downstream time, which is 90 over V plus 3 over here. And so we just need to plug in V. And then just simplify. And you can do this however you like. I'm just going to pull out a 9. So end up here. <clears throat> 